Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. It's about time that we start looking at the new ships in the Russian slash Soviet tech tree. And we'll be kicking it off with the tier 10 new heavy cruiser, the Petropavlovsk. Now, if we're looking at the, de at the details here, uh, the Petropavlovsk is a Project 82 cruiser. Now, this is all a little confusing because well, first of all, none of these ships really existed. I mean, some bits of them existed at some stage, but of some of them. But a lot of this was just, um, well, designs really and studies for things that the Soviets would have liked to have, but uh, actually didn't. And Project 82 is actually the Stalingrad class of heavy cruisers slash battle cruisers. Now, the Stalingrads were supposed to be a mildly cheaper version of the Kronstadt class battlecruisers, <laughs> which we actually have in game as well. Like a smaller version, a slightly cheaper version. Um, and their main purpose, depending on who you were asking, was either to accompany um, Soviet carrier divisions into battle and provide support, hunt down heavy cruisers, or if you asked um, Stalin himself, uh, co cause confusion among the light cruisers of their opponents and actually uh, sail around in coastal waters. So generally one top, one theme that often goes through these things is that Stalin and his, his naval design teams and his actual navy and everybody else had very, very different ideas about what it is that they wanted. So the Kronstadts, and we actually do have the Kronstadt here in... Well, let's see, where, where is she? There. We've got the Kronstadt here as a premium in Tier 9. And the Kronstadt, do they mention it here? No, I think it was, was it Project 65? I don't know, I can't remember. I'm going to have to look it up. But um, the, the Stalingrads, there were actually three of them. Stalingrad herself, uh, Moskva, and I think Kronstadt, which is confusing because it's not the same Kronstadt as the actual Kronstadt class. But where does that leaves us, leave us with the Petropavlovsk? Well, the Petropavlovsk never existed. There wasn't any ship of the Stalingrad class with that name, or three of them were laid down. But there was definitely a bit of confusion around what kind of guns they wanted on these things, because the requirements kept changing all the time. And the 220 millimeter guns that we are seeing on the Mos Moskva, which is technically a Stalingrad class cru cruiser, were either there or the 305 millimeter guns that we're seeing on occasion as well. So, what is the Petro Pavlov? Petro Pavlov. I'm going to call her the Petro, right? <laughs> Just because. Petro Pavlov. Pavlov. <laughs> okay, I give up. Petro Pavlovsk. Da. I said it once, and now we call it a Petro. So, how does this thing compare to the rest of her of her kin? Now, let's begin and actually comparing her to the lead ship of the class, the actual Stalingrad. And we will notice very quickly that the, um, the Petro gets fewer defensive AA, fewer precise aiming, but gets a rapid reload. Now, the Stalingrad here has less armor than the Petro Vatlovsk, which is weird, <laughs> but is more maneuverable and actually comes around with the 305mm main guns. And I think this was one of Stalin's own wishes. So this is not completely unprecedented, whereas the Petro Pavlovsk has the... Uh, 220 millimeter guns that we're finding on the Moskva as well. Other than that, we've got 130 millimeter secondaries, and the one thing that stands out is that the Petro has very slightly longer range, and actually has a very respectable AA, although she isn't all that far from the actual Stalingrad. Better concealment as well. So, how about we compare the Petro to the Moskva, the other Stalingrad class battlecruiser that's actually in here? And once again, um, we notice that the Moskva gets, well, an additional precise aim and actually has radar, whereas the Petro does not. Which is really funny because the description of the Petro actually says that it was a ship in a hypothetical universe that was kind of designed with the lessons learned from the Second World War. And I'm pretty sure radar falls under these. But uh, once again, what we notice is that the Petro is actually significantly better armored than the Moskva. And this, I don't know where that comes from. But um, this is really, really more of a battle cruiser with the 15% citadel protection and 12% damage reduction. It's, unfortunately, it's tier 10. <laughs> and we'll get to that in a second. So um, 
has less health than the Moscow as well. The Moscow is more maneuverable by, by a noticeable margin. And on paper, they have the same guns. These are the 220mm L65, uh, very high velocity main guns. Now, you might notice, if you're eagle-eyed, that the Petropavlovsk, compared to the Stalingrad and the Moskva, has inherited the Moskva's gun caliber and the Stalingrad's reload. So we have 220mm guns with 14 second base reload, and we only get nine of them. That's, um, that's a thing. The Moskva gets better range on her guns as well, plus a significantly faster reload. Uh, one thing though that's interesting, and I haven't played the Petro Pavlovsk, uh, sorry, I haven't played the Moskva, I've only played the Petro, is that these guns in the armor piercing hit extremely hard. And given that the AP actually does more damage on the Petro, I am wondering if these guns actually have different penetration values, because they are, they are murderous. Uh, once again, the longer range on the secondaries, and compared to the Moskva, a rather significantly better AA. Lastly, if we are comparing the Petro to the Kronstadt, to the tier 9, and we're just going to call it a cruiser, once again we notice that the Petro, out of all these things, actually has a significantly better armor. So this is much more of a battle cruiser than the other ones. Uh, once again, she's not as maneuverable, and she doesn't get the 305mm guns, but she only gets the 220s, although these 220s are hitting extremely hard and do have the same fire chance, which isn't grand, but here again we see it, same reload time, 14 seconds. Well, the difference being that the Kronstadt doesn't get a rapid reload, but it's a rapid reload one, it doesn't make a huge dent into it, and we only get one of them. So, where does that leave us? Well. If you, <laughs> if you took a Moskva <laughs> and, and the Kronstadt and um, basically took the... Okay, it's not a terrible ship, right? <laughs> it's not a completely terrible ship. But man, that reload hurts. Uh, this is a battle cruiser. This is not a heavy cruiser. So let's just put it this way. This is a battle cruiser with a conspicuously low main gun caliber, but very, very ouchy armor piercing on these things. That explosive is meh. Um, trying to set fires with these things on battleships is a bit of a questionable effort with these things, especially at tier 10. But uh, let's take a very quick look at what you can get here. So you can get an elite bonus to give you better firing range, which I thoroughly recommend. Or you can get 1% hit points, which isn't great, uh, and you get a bit of torpedo damage reduction, but it's really not much, because the 7%, just in case you're not super aware of how this works, so it's 7% of the percentage. It's not 7% points, right? It's not that your fire and flooding resistance goes from 17% to 24%. No, it's 7% of 17% that you get on top of. So like 1.5% or something, which isn't bad. I mean, it's still good to have because fire and flooding resistance actually reduces the amount of damage you're taking from fires, not just the chance of getting them. But um, I really wanted that additional 4% of range on this ship. Module-wise, I have the main battery mod 3 in here. Now, you could go and take the main battery mod 1, because the turret traverse is battleship 5 degrees per second, which is terrible, because these are only 220mm guns. You could take the main battery mod 2 and um, just get a little bit out of this disastrous 14 second reload, or you could even go for secondary reload and play her more aggressively. Well, you could if it wasn't tier 10. And this thing has the size of a, of a medium-sized city. It's got its own postcode. So you could, all you could take all these things, uh, but uh, this is, while it is a battle cruiser and it has reasonably good armor, um, it's a ship that something like, um, like a Vermont is going to look at and say, oh, <laughs> damage piñata. Whoa. <laughs> the this armor cannot stand up to the calibers that you're seeing in tier 10. You cannot stand up to Vermont's, Ohio's, Yamas, uh, hell, even uh, Gascogne's, uh, even German battleships I'm careful with. So it's once again a ship that has the size and maneuverability of a, of a battleship. And it's, it's, just got, it's, it's got just enough armor to 
make sure that the 480 millimeter main guns of something like a Vermont arm properly and explode right in the middle of your citadel. <laughs> so let me just put it that way. Uh, the second slot, I have propulsion mod because you generally want to avoid being shot at and you'll be finding yourself being bow in quite a fair bit and the maneuverability once again is battleship. Uh, the deck protection mod would not be a bad choice here <laughs> because <laughs> she does get set on fire quite a bit. Uh, or the steering gear mod in slot 3 is generally what I would recommend as well. And just uh, just such you could set her up for AA. She's not a bad AA ship, um, but and just play it at really long range as if you can. But they even with all the things in here, the range of the main batteries is just under fourteen kilometers, which means you need to get uncomfortably close to the enemy team, while at the same time not really being able to punish them. Because if we're talking about penetration, now these two hundred twenty millimeter guns are, I said, absolutely murderous against other cruisers. Against battleships, the armor piercing, eh, not so much. Um, the high explosive isn't great at all because most of the times you're going to get semi pens for 200 odd damage and uh, with a 7% fire chance and a 14 second reload, that's not an HE spammer. But um, it, it, it can occasionally be useful. The other problem that you're going to have with the guns is that the 220s with the murderous um, shell velocity and armor piercing are, unless you're shooting at extreme ranges of 12 kilometers or so, absolutely going to over-penetrate destroyers, which means you're then going to have to switch back to the high explosive, which then, again, isn't the greatest. But that brings us to the commander skills. If I can tip on it. Um, I have gotten the battlefield support for an additional air defense alert. You really may want to consider taking the torpedo alert as well, or <laughs> instead, rather. Because, um, well, she doesn't get a hydro. And uh, if you poke your nose out somewhere where there are torpedoes in the water, you can occasionally be rather surprised by them. The artillery maintenance strongly recommended, so is the air defense expert. Now, you absolutely, positively, very much want the fire supremacy. Because this ship gets only a single rapid reload, and you really want a second one. And uh, she also has precise aim, and you really want a second one, because she only got, or a third one, because she only got two of them. I do have exploit weakness because I thought that I could HE, use HE a bit more against battleships, but at the end of the day, mm, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it still works even if the, even if you are not the one setting the thing on fire that you're using this against. But uh, you might as well use generalist. That's not a terrible skill to have as well. You do want the marksman skill. Uh, you very much do want the extinguisher skill. Now you could either take demo expert or close quarters. For, um, for better secondary dispersion, but uh, you're going to use these secondaries mostly against destroyers because your main guns A turn like um, something turning very, very slowly, and uh, B, they have a 14 second reload, so most of the time the secondaries is where it's at. Uh, and you definitely want the master reloader skill because you do get now two rapid reloads with this thing. Camo-wise, uh, the historical camo gives us range on the mains, but it doesn't give us dispersion because it's a, it's a battle cruiser. It's not a, a it's not an actual battleship, so you get the you get more of a cruiser support setup. Uh, large caliber AA range isn't isn't a terrible thing to have, and uh, torpedo damage reduction. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yes, it's useful. It's, it's not, it, but it's not by itself a reason to purchase the historical camo. Let's have a very quick look at the battle honors, because this is actually a tech tree ship, so it's not like free resources on this thing. Um, you, you can win 20 battles. Uh, you do, that's, that's something you can achieve. 1.8 million points of damage, that's definitely doable. Uh, 75 citadels, yes. Yes, that should be probably around about 10 games or so. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, 40 cruisers, yes, very much. And uh, 105,000 points of damage in one battle, that is doable if you are lucky. All right then, um, let's, uh, do we have anything else to look at? No, I think that's it. Let's uh, take a look at some gameplay. And we are on chain in Epicenter. There's a Midway on the enemy team, a Monty, a Kurfürst, Minnesota, Stalingrad, Shima and Jutland. Uh, we have better armor than Stalingrad, <laughs> but still Stalingrad has bigger guns, so uh, it probably evens each other out. 
But uh, yeah, let's let's do this. How much do you want to bet that the carriers are going to leave the destroyers completely alone and com uh, focus on farming the battleships and um, that the Mino isn't going to be on... Well, let's see what the Mino is going to do. Mino would be actually really good to deal with Shima and Jutland. But uh, we will see. So yeah, you don't get a radar. So you do have to be a little bit careful. And once again, well, it is designated a cruiser. It handles like a battleship. So you so treat it as such. A low armor, low health Boy, battleship. Nice. Which means we probably want to go find ourselves a little island and stick to that island as much as we possibly can. Now the one thing that you can do, even though it's just a uh, defensive AA1, you can lend a little bit of AA support to things like that Shima over there, who is heading straight into the capture circle, which is good. But it also means that he's probably going to head straight into the carrier drop. But so far the carrier is only sending fighter planes out for scouting and doesn't seem to be interested whatsoever to do anything about the um, actually dealing damage here. So he's scouting, which is good, and he's probably seen, I'm not sure if he's seen the Shima, but he's definitely seen the Mino, <laughs> and he's turning around again. Shima is still heading for the cup. At this range, uh, there's the enemy Shima, at this range you do want to use the armor piercing, because uh, the, the drop-off in penetration is often sufficient that you actually can get full pens. There you go, see, two full pens, and the high explosive damage is is reasonably low, in that it's not really going to... Uh, going to give you much. Okay, Mino is smoking up and coming under air attack. Are you really ready to push into Mino and me? We both have decent AA, I'd say. We're not Woosters, but... Um, okay, there comes the Torp drop. Or was that the Carrier drop or is it something else? But then uh, Mino took it, I think. So uh, I'm just going to nose into his uh, smoke screen a little bit and uh, see if I can get another salvo of that Chima over there. And um, I had the high explosive loaded because I thought the destroyers would be coming closer. Okay, there's Jutland. Uh, Mino, could you kill Jutland? I'm really, really not in the right ship for that sort of thing. I'm just going to dodge those torps. I mean, I'm going to give it a go, but um, uh, let's see if we can get the center cup. And Jutland doesn't seem to be super interested in coming here because there's Mino. At this range, again, I want to switch over back to the armor piercing because you see I get semi-pens on the high explosive. The high explosive isn't great on this ship. Um, it's uh, it's it's you know it's the AP where where it's all at. So Jutland is sitting next to that island over there, and um, I've got myself a Kurfürst and a Stalingrad to shoot at. Now the Kurfürst that's a problem because the Kurfürst is extremely heavily armored, so my armor piercing isn't going to do a great amount of things. But as you can see, we still get semi pens on the AP. But I am switching over to the HE because there is a whole bunch of torps coming in and I'm trying to set a fire, get him to damage corner a single fire and then permaflood or something on that kind. But you see the HE isn't doing a great deal and um, no fires unfortunately. There's the flood, he's going to damage corner the flood, which means that the next salvo might be able to set a permafire. But um, he, has, he has noticed me, which means I'm going to have to back off here. I mean, it's a cool first, and he's probably over-penetrated most of my bow because I've just put her into reverse, but uh, I am taking fire, and taking fire is not something you'd necessarily want to do, especially if it's larger calibers. Plus, we are holding, uh, well, we are holding some of, who's that is shooting at me? Oh, it's the Jutland. Hello. Uh, he's probably got torpedoes underway, doesn't he? I mean, if he's not interested in the capture circle, then um, then I don't really, really care. Okay, back to the armor piercing because the cool first is on fire. And I don't seem to be able to set any fires whatsoever. The Mino is making a very aggressive move here. Um, going to kill the Shima, but uh, I'm trying to catch the Kur first there. Uh, before he can escape, there come some Shima Torps. And I think Mino's taken out Shima, well done. But now he's giving broadside to everybody and he is on reasonably low health. So either smoke up or get, get the heck out of there. Um, unfortunately, you can't cap because you're, there's a Minnesota shooting at us. But I'm, I'm going to do what I can because it looks like no one else is re... Like our destroyer doesn't seem to be interested in going for the capture circle. And yeah, I think the, minot the Minotaur is smoking up, but it's a bit too late. Yeah, Montana takes him out. But uh, maybe I can still use the smoke screen. So we are still holding two rings and we are ahead on point, so it's all good. And there's something that I can actually hurt. There's the Stalingrad. So let's get a bunch of shots out and see what we can do to, to that thing at that range. There's some Torps. That's probably the Jutland sitting out there. Honestly, I can't be bothered um, to deal with Jutland because somebody's going to need to cut that center cup. And um, it looks like I'm the one to do it. So let's see if we can get our nose in there. Well, right now, I'm just making the best use of the Minus remaining smoke screen as much as I can, but it has expired. There's Izumo. I'm going to use... There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, I'm just going to use Izumo as a meat shield for a little bit because he's got a lot of health. 
while the Minnesota is shooting at me. And um, once my, my heal comes off cooldown and I can recover a little bit of hit points, then we're going to go off into the capture circle. Now, heavily armored things like German battleships, American battleships, you often want to use the high explosive just to set some fires because your 220 mils are mostly going to bounce. But um, like I, stated, I mentioned before, the high explosive isn't great. All right, so let's see if we can make it to that central island uh, before, the, uh, before the Minnesota reloads. <laughs> I still have one defensive AA that I can use, and um, I want to fight the Stalingrad. I don't want to fight the Minnesota or the Montana, really, because that's not what I'm good for. I'm a battle cruiser, not a battleship. So uh, let's see if the carrier has any interest in us. Oh, we shot the plane down. Woo! -hoo. A bunch of shots out at Stalingrad, and I think we managed to get into cover before the Minnesota comes around. But now um, I'm getting shot at by the Jutland, which means there are probably torpedoes on the way. Which means I do have to be a little bit careful. Otherwise, I'm just going to ignore him, as, as does everybody else, honestly, because he's nowhere near the capture circles. And, um, yeah, he's just trying to burn me down here. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to damage Connoissant with fire. It's only 30 seconds until the next heal. So I'm going to go nose in against the Stalingrad. Okay, triple fire. Yeah, that, thanks. That's what I saved it up for. <laughs> so uh, that, that plan didn't come. Okay, now he's trying to set me on fire again. I was gonna back off a little bit and um, use my forward turrets to shoot at uh, to shoot at that Stalingrad. There we go, another citadel. And uh, meanwhile, just ignore the Jutland on my side <laughs> because there's, honestly, there's not all that much I can do about it. I mean, I'm gonna die here. This is pretty much out of the question. But I think we've got this in the bag because we've been holding the center cup. And um, yep, there we go. Uh, I think my team would be hard pressed to throw it at this point. I'd say. Because we have been holding the center cup, which means that nobody could get in here. The Stalingrad is going to give it a damn good try. But um, by now we've got more battleships coming and the Jutland is... Oh, the carrier is dropping the Jutland. Well done. <laughs> that would have been useful about three minutes ago. But anyway, uh, yeah, the, I think we've the Stalingrad isn't going to make it into the center cup. The Shima is suiciding against the Monty, but... Um, We've been holding the capture circles for long enough that uh, that this shouldn't make any more difference. Yeah, Stalin isn't going to make it in there anymore, so we have done what we could. All right, where do we come? Oh, we're coming on top of the team, which is surprising with 57,000 points of damage in a uh, top tier battle. But it's not surprising if it's epicenter, because as usual, um, capture circles are toxic, so nobody really wants to be in there, as you can see from... Except for the Shima, and I think the Miner did a really good job there as well, as you can see from the team score. Uh, only two Citadels, which is a really reasonably meager outcome, so let's do another one. And in the second battle, we are very much in a default map for top tier. It's Encounter in base capture. And once again, it's a carrier battle. And there is an Udaloi and a Shimakaze on the enemy team, in terms of destroyers, plus a Moskva, a Smolensk. You know what I'm thinking about Smolensk's. So uh, let's let's get to it. Um, yeah, encounter. So carrier game, which means I'm going to be on, on air defense duty for either the Holland. Well, the Holland doesn't really need it, but the Z-52 definitely does. And uh, we'll see where we're spawning. Okay, so my, my go-to location is that island there on my left. And because that's... The, it's a cross-spawn. So the three of the enemy teams are spawning, like, literally where I'm looking at, more or less. And uh, it's generally a good idea to make sure that that flank is secure. Uh, we do have a destroyer with us and we have a carrier, so we should be getting some scouting, hopefully, maybe, I don't know. You never know with carriers, but um, there's definitely there's definitely um, airborne freedom coming our way. Was that a midway? I'm not sure. But yeah, there's, there's airborne freedom coming our way and I'm trying to, as much as possible to protect the Z-52 here. Uh, if you're a destroyer player, oh, the, the carrier actually runs away. Okay, it's, never mind. But if you're a destroyer player and you see a carrier drop coming your way early on, um, you kind of, and I'm air spotted, you kind of want to stick with, what are you torping? You can't, really, seriously, what are you torping? You can't even see anything. Um, you really want to uh, stick with a cruiser, if you can, that has some AA. Okay, there's a Smolensk. Uh, we know where the one of the destroyers is, but I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to stop here. And um, there is Moskva as well. So let's fire out at the Moskva and the Smolensk is there. So Smolensk takes priority, definitely. Rapid reload up. Oh, torpedoes. Torpedoes? Already? 
What the? Oh, ow. Okay, that is unfortunate. Um, nice citadel there on the Smolensk, but I think that was the Udaloy because that's the only thing that's fast enough and has the torp range to actually get here by this at this time. That's something I'm going to have to get used to because um, because uh, I do have somewhat of an idea about at which point destroyers can can start to torp drop. So he must have gone just outside detection range and be um, idling somewhere. Wouldn't be grand if the carrier was doing something about that. And he is actually. He's air spotting the Udaloy. And um, which means I have lost a considerable amount of health and at which point I'm going to need to back off a little bit. And uh, Monty, you don't want to be out there because there's an Udaloy and there's a Smolensk. And you know what happens. And the Udaloy has pretty good <laughs> a pretty good uh, HE. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Uh, triple perma fires is what ha what happens. So, no, you don't want to be out there. Absolutely not. You want to be somewhere completely different. Um, Okay, we're just going to play defensive here and hope that the rest of our team can can get something done on the other half of the map because the Monty is running rapidly running out of hit points, and um, I'm going to have to wait for for a heal to come off cooldown. Oh, Smolensk, hello. Okay, uh, that's probably going to miss. I think he was in a turn. Yep, Monty reverses out of that, and I, this is about as far forward as I want to go because uh, Smolensk is starting to open up on me again. Nope, nope, you are not going to kill me, Mr. Smolensk, and not if I have anything to say about it. And uh, that's another citadel on the Smolensk. I'm down to 800 hit points. There's no action. I'm not getting hit, not getting shot at by the Moskva. Okay, I should be just about out of range of that Smolensk. Yeah, this is fine. Um, I think my blind shot has missed, but I've got a heal coming off cooldown. As long as I'm sitting here, uh, they're probably not gonna get any weird ideas. Okay, enemy Shima is down. Good, good. That's a, that's progress. Uh, Moskva seems to be coming around the the corner. Uh, Monty, how much health do you have left? Uh, are you capable of dealing with that thing, or do I have to help out? I'm gonna have to help out here, don't I? Um, not sure what the carrier is dropping right now, but a little air support over here would go a long way. Uh, well, we get some shots out at the Moskva. I am running low on on um, on ship skills, and of course the Moskva sees me <laughs> and tries to take me out, which is legitimate because I am the low health target here. But um, yeah. Uh, we do have we do have fighter support, so in case the enemy carrier has any funny ideas, but I don't think he has. He's got either he's got problems of his own, so these are a little bit wasted here with us. But um, just reversing, using the precise aim and hitting the Moskva with the front guns. Definitely do not want to turn and get my rear guns to bear right now. I just want to reverse out of the range as much as possible and get Moskva to miss, such that Monty can do. Um, oh, Monty missed completely, didn't he? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, this is what I meant when I said these 220 meter, millimeter guns are absolutely murderous against cruisers. Um, yeah, that kind of push, my friend, uh, you really don't want to do that. Not uh, not alone. Oh, come on, I've been robbed. Okay, Monty, kill that thing. Uh, thanks, Monty kills him. But I think Monty is going to go down next because, well, look who's back, our friend in the Smolensk. <laughs> Uh, that's a nice broadside there you have that you have there, Mr. Smolensk. Uh, he's gonna burn down the Monty. And um, I mean the fighters are nice to keep him spotted, but um, that's my last heal. Smolensk goes undetected, obviously. So somebody having radar, but no one's in range anyway. Now the thing is, um, Smolensk has such a rapid rate of fire that I can kind of see where he is. Oh, there's a Yamato. Oh crap. Okay, so uh, new problem. Monty dead. Uh, I'm on 13,000 hit points. Smolensk is shooting at me, obviously. And we're gonna get rushed by Yama. So I have to get close enough to keep the island between me and Yama. The thing is, I can't see the Smolensk. How did I bounce two shells of Smolensk? Again, I've been robbed, haven't I? I, I can see where you are, right? You know that. Because, I mean, you're going back and forth in your smoke, which is good. But um, I see your tracers. <laughs> I know where you are. Oh, two overpens. That is, must have been the luckiest Smolensk in the world. Come on! I'ma get ya. I'ma get ya. Oh, there you are. I see you. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Smolensk. And that leaves us with... Yep, that's the end of the Smolensk. That leaves us with 4,000 hit points, which means um, there's absolutely nothing we can do about this Yamato. The only thing we can do about this Yamato is delay him long enough that the carrier gets some damage in. Now, Yamato, has he just damage on a single fire? I'm not sure if he has, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, try to get the island between me and him, he can't see me because I'm unspotted, so I'm just going to get some shots out at him. And um, I'm not doing a great deal amount, but I'm going to use the secondaries. He's on single perma and he's shooting at me, obviously, including the auto secondaries. But he just fired his main guns. I don't think... I, I might be able to get away here with, before he can fire his main guns again. 
Uh, oh no, it wasn't the Permafire. Okay, now he Damakont. So, Carrier, now it's up to you. You you kill that thing, Permaflood, Permafire, all the fun things. Because I'm dead. <laughs> Are we on points? Uh, we're, we're 10 points ahead. So, um, now the Carrier has to defeat a Yamato. Let's see if he can pull that off. Meanwhile, we have Dimitri Donskoy chasing the enemy Carrier up there. But yeah, because he is, and if he, the Carrier doesn't... Oh, he survives, he survives. <laughs> Lucky Carrier, he survives. And that's triple permafire plus perma flood, and the <laughs> Yamato is dead. All thanks to that little fire I set with my secondaries, if I may say so myself. So uh, it looks like the Donskoy might still be able to take out the enemy midway, but um, I think we've got that in the bag. Well done. Well done, everybody. So, in general, um, is this a great tier 10 ship? Mm, no. You know that I'm not a huge fan of top tier battle cruisers, because once again, um, the the maneuverability is good for a battle cruiser, but poor for a cruiser. The reload is too long. The precision is okay, especially with the precise aim active. The 220s are hitting extremely hard, but you do know how you do need you need you do need to know how to use them. They are absolutely murderous against enemy cruisers. Uh, and uh, that includes things like Stalingrads. They are, or Kronstadts. They are okay against the battleships with the armor piercing, but the high explosive is a bit on the meh side. And the 14 second reload, if you bow in, really, really hurts your, your damage output. So, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an okay ship. It's not a bad ship, but... Um, Personally, I prefer like if, if you would if you were asking me, um, should I get that or let's say a Worcester or a Des Moines or a Hindenburg? Um, well, my answer would be reasonably clear. Uh, you, you want something like a Hindi, for example, which has only two and three millimeter guns, but it's got twelve of them. It's got a faster reload, and um, is is an is an all around absolutely murderous ship. Uh, this is. Yeah, definitely the heavier end of the cruiser line. And um, I haven't played the Moskva, so I can't really say. It's got better armor than the Moskva. It's got poorer maneuverability and it's got a longer reload with technically the same guns. You know, are the Moskva's guns uh, Citadel City like this thing? Don't know. But uh, if they're not, then this might be a good argument for the ship. Uh, if you're in a cruiser and you see one of these things shooting at you and you're going like, oh yeah, okay, it's 200 millimeter heavy cruiser up, and we're piercing, I can tank this, no you can't, run away. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, um, destroyers, watch out for the secondaries, battleships, it's food. So, um, yeah, that's the Petro Pavlovsk, uh, the mighty Petro at tier 10. And we'll be looking at the rest of the whole thing down the line as we go. That's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and see you next time. Bye.